Hello. Uh, well, in this episode of Finogrig Machining, well, we are going to do a minor repair for an agricultural machine. <laughs> Uh, well, it's uh, dealing with, uh, well, it's uh, sort of a wheel hub. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know what the English word for this machine is. Well, uh, it's a machine that you use to place seeds in the ground. And, uh, well, uh, there is uh, something like uh, 10 wheels uh, uh, behind it. And uh, those are in a shaft. And then you have uh, four wheel hu hubs, and then uh, uh, those wheels are squeezed together with those hubs. Well, yeah, <laughs> and uh, now uh, uh, what has happened here is that the um, center hole on, the, on this hub was welded on the on, on a long shaft, and this welder has uh, given up the coast. It has uh, broke free. And then uh, those wheels have been turning uh, uh, not from the bearings, but from the contact point of the shaft and the hub. And uh, well, uh, the shaft is uh, being repaired elsewhere. And uh, this uh, shaft is uh, pretty long. Actually, I don't have the room to handle those. Um, but uh, those wheel hubs, uh, those uh, center holes must be straightened and uh, well, uh, they will be larger than original. Uh, there will be no bushing. I could make a bush, bushing to those, but since they need to weld, build the shaft, uh, then they can turn it to the desired uh, di diameter. So, I just uh, bore these uh, mm, uh, holes to a correct dimension, clean up the environment a little bit so that they can weld them back there. So, uh, this will be a milling job altogether. Uh, these the hubs are 42 <laughs> centimeters, 420 centimeters in diameter. Uh, no, uh, 400 actually. Uh, they barely fit into my milling machine, uh, but they fit. And uh, yeah, and now I'm just uh, going to use my Wollhaupter to get those, this uh, bore uh, the hole straight and also there is this facing function I can uh, get rid of the old uh, weld uh, so they can uh, put an entirely new weld into there. <laughs> uh, so well uh, let's start uh, with that one. Well uh, this is one of the <laughs> plates they are really 40 uh, centimeters in diameter and uh, well 25 millimeters thick and that hole is what I was talking about you can see how the weld has been broken here uh, well uh, we are going to clean this surface and then also make the bore consistent and now it's somewhat rounded at wo and whatever uh, well it should be straight and uh, with precise diameter so our first task is to, hmm, well, dial this in. Let's first have the needle somewhere near. I'm using my Heimer here. This is uh, probably the best device for this kind of a task. Let's put it a little bit deeper like that, okay. And now I just gently touch it first like that and then I try to find out the minimum here. Well it's already quite in the center. Let's put a little bit, bit more. Oh this is a really well the x-axis of this milling machine is really sensitive so Let's see about, I'm dialing the Y in, now you can see it rises, went down. I think that's about our center point. And now what I will do, I will actually go like this to the zero, like this. 
there you are and then I reset my dials here I have I tighten uh, the locks of the table a little bit so that it doesn't uh, wander around I'm resetting here in the background my dial one more time and now what I will do now is to measure the diameter of this hole I could do this with uh, snap gauge but this one uh, wouldn't be oh it's quite tight <laughs> let's see if I can this should be somewhere around 50 millimeters so there that's now our point okay it is 52.2 millimeters the diameter from that edge to this edge 52.2 so <coughs> uh, the center point here is at 21.1 so we go there 21.1 like that is that yeah it could man it looks like being 21 26.20 ah i have to calculate this <sighs> on 52.2 divided by 2 equals 26.1 that is 26 that's 20 25 26 is here point one is there and now I can lock my X locked doesn't move anymore so, and then uh, this is very easy to do because now it's already in the center so I just go a little bit past to eliminate backslash there is the zero I zero my dials here again hopefully this works okay and now we come back 26.1 20 uh, six point one and now I can lock my Y there it is and now it's uh, in the center of that hole and uh, next step will be to start uh, change the wall halter here and uh, then I will start uh, milling the hole Okay, uh, what I'm doing now, I'm going to get rid of uh, this uh, uh, this old weld here, which uh, has hasn't been a very good weld, uh, I can tell. And uh, yeah, uh, I will um, now. I'm going to use the planing function of this boring head, so I'm going to take half millimeter at a time first. I hope this. Uh, Welds are not hardened, so that I can uh, get these uh, easily out. Uh, that's my wish here. But this doesn't uh, look promising. This uh, this thing here. Uh, anyway, now uh, I'm going to plane it uh, to the parent metal. So uh, yeah, uh, maybe 0 0.25 millimeters first. So. Let's go. Uh, running this about 100 revolutions per minute. Uh, and uh, feeding out now. With this boring planing head. Let's see what kind of results do we get here. Okay. Doesn't sound too bad, actually. Well, <laughs> that was uh, 0.25 millimeters. 
And now what I will do, I will uh, back it up by there is uh, this reverse function and uh, just back it up a few turns like that and then we can take our next cut. Oh yeah, okay, let's take down to 0.5 millimeters now. Uh -huh. A little bit more now. Okay. Rewinded it and now I co connect this feed again and now well I'm not willing to take more than uh, 0 <laughs> 0 0.25 millimeters at the time this might I want to see how hard this is actually That's enough. Let it whistle a little bit. <laughs> yep. So there we are now. Uh, now it's planed and we have a very nasty boar here. Um, well, let's see what I can do with those. Uh, go there. <laughs> Down they go. Okay, so now they have enough room to weld it uh, there now. So next I will make this uh, bore even. Um, let's see now. Okay. Uh, there you are. And then I'm going to use. Oh, there you are. Like that. Okay. So I'll come back when uh, I'm ready to start boring. I need to make sure that it uh, cuts evenly. We, I don't want to make these holes any larger than uh, is actually needed. <clears throat> okay, uh, I have now made my first pass into that hole there and I measured it. Uh, so it's uh, at the moment 
38. Let's try this to be 52.5. Exactly. Okay, there you are. And now let's dial in here 52.38. So we need uh, 0. Point, uh, um, 1 point, 0 0.12 millimeters. So that's 0 0.1 and 2. There you are. Should be. Tighten the gips. And then I'm feeding this. Uh, uh, it's a uh, machine feed. <laughs> Uh, 17 millimeters per, per minute and the speed of the spindle is a little bit higher it's uh, 170 revolutions per minute and here we go let's see if it cleans up uh, this might not yeah it cuts but it's a very shallow cut <laughs> Well, and it tries to whistle on me. Wow. And it did not, did not clean up. Yeah. The surface finishes, man, it's a rough surface finish, but uh, okay, uh, let's measure it, I need to pull it down like this, to measure it, it should be now uh, 52.5. <laughs> And we have a horrific pull in there. I need to take care of that, I think. Yeah, I'm using my snap gauge here. Hopefully I get a good measurement now. <laughs> well, this is a wall halter. It's 52.5. Quite exactly. So, and did not clean up. Did it? No, it did not. So we need to make an additional pass there, maybe. Fifty two point five. Well, there are some is some rounding around, so well, if I make it exactly fifty three millimeters, so then we are there. Ah. Let's go. Now it should be one hundredth of a millimeter over fifty three millimeters. So fifty three or one. 
I want to take it back. Yes, like that. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this... Uh, now the surface finish is really, really good. Well, uh, cutting oil is definitely needed with this. Oh, yeah, this is very nice. It might also be that the material wa was work hardened a, a little bit because it has been had been rubbing around there. Let's see now. So it probably is 52, 53.02. Well, that's okay. Uh, that's entirely okay. So now they have 200 of a millimeter oversized this, and uh, if they make their shaft 53 millimeters, it will uh, go there and uh, there won't be a lot of play. Uh, well, now I want to get a uh, chamfer this one. This, you cannot see it. I want to do some chamfering here and uh, get rid of uh, the burr in this side. And then I will turn this plate around and uh, plane uh, cut the other side as well. Okay, uh, now I have uh, turned uh, this workpiece around and, uh, well, this is the last operation for this one. I will uh, get rid of the old weld here and, uh, yeah, it's uh, as simple as that. And, uh, yeah, uh, again, I'm uh, using the planing function of this uh, boring head. Uh, that's uh, what connects uh, the boring. And let's see where we are. I think I already did this turn, but uh, I just do it to be sure. Seems like so. Yeah. Okay, that's already done. So I will disconnect the drive here, like this. This knob comes up, and then I will uh, now when I keep these both, it will retract the uh, cutting plate, <laughs> boring bar. And now uh, 0 0.25 millimeters more, and then I will connect here this feed and now we go and I will repeat this until we uh, peel off the paint uh, from the surroundings well it should start any moment now hmm. Oh yeah, now. Okay, I think we need to mm, have a little bit more of this, okay, retract the blade, not so far as uh, in the previous time it was really far, okay, now let's see, uh, 0 0.25 like that and then I will connect that and there we go again Yes, 
I got rid of that. Good. Well, it peels off the paint now. Very good. I think we are there. Yeah. So, enough room for welding here. And yeah, yeah, it did. And now I want to get rid of that uh, corner there. Uh, that uh, I can chamfer it with this same tool. Let's see now. Placement for that, yeah, it's okay. So now I will uh, lock the gips and then I will just feed up manually. This should take care of the corner. A little bit more to be consistent, so to say. There you are. Yeah. Well, this one is now ready. Then I, I have another uh, identical, uh, which I will also bore to 53 millimeters and do the tempering and removing the paint and all the weldings, etc. So.
Well, uh, now that I have done uh, the other type of uh, uh, hoops, uh, well, uh, these are another type. Uh, these uh, don't. Uh, these are not going to be welded on the shaft. Instead, they are going to be sliding there. And now, um, this bore should be the same with the ones I just made, so that this can slide into the place. So um, it will be 53 millimeters uh, minus nothing plus 500. That's the tolerance. So I already took it so that uh, this was a little bit over 50 millimeters. Uh, now it's uh, 51.05. Yeah. 51.05. And uh, I'm uh, taking half a millimeter cuts here. Uh, so, half a millimeter. <laughs> uh, let's see now. Uh, 20, 30, 40, and 50. 50 microns. And, uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. 50 hundreds, uh, so 500 microns. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Uh, and then we are going to use some cutting fluid here. Uh, this seems to benefit from this. Although carbide insert doesn't uh, need that. Furthermore, this is more uh, better material to cut than the previous one because this doesn't have the welds in it. That material had a lot of welds, uh, which uh, really made uh, the cutting process really interrupted, so to say. So, now we go. There you are.
And this is running 150 revolutions per minute. I could probably run it a little bit faster. Well, let's not do that. Well, it smokes. <laughs> okay. Okay, and now a little bit cutting oil and uh, then we'll take uh, the next half a millimeter. Then we should be at 52.05. I will measure it after this pass. So, uh, Let's measure this. It should be 52.05. Well, the surface is sort of rough, but it's not rough. It's it's a surface. <laughs> There is some texture in it, but I, I, I cannot put my finger on what is this. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, let's see now. What is the measure? Hmm, 52.05, <laughs> well, uh, this Wallhalter is wonderful, really, uh, it's uh, really accurate, 52.05, now we take uh, another half a millimeter here, and after that we take the two last passes, the other one will be something like 20, 0 0.25 millimeters and the other one 0 0.20, depending on, on how much it, uh, the first pass leaves there. So now we need cutting fluid here. All over the place, like that. Go down a little bit. There, did I look? Yep. Let's see how we did, I mean dimension-wise. Well, the surface finishes <laughs> as it has been all the time, a strange. Uh, I don't understand why it does <laughs> this kind of a surface. It's uh, somewhat shiny, yeah, 
yeah and uh, but there is uh, well a structure <laughs> in it i don't understand okay let's see now so uh, what this now should be this should be 53.02 or 0.03 but not 0.05 and hopefully not under 53 millimeters. That would be really bad. Well, guess what? 53.04, which is exactly, it's very good. So now I just uh, take it away from uh, this milling machine, Dibur, these corners. And uh, then I have an uh, additional one, one more to go, and it's a similar job in that one. So, uh, yeah. Well, that's it then, uh, yeah, uh, four uh, wheel hubs, and uh, well, they are not uh, actually wheel hubs, they are a piece where wheel hubs are connected to, uh, well, I will try to find a picture about this machine, so you understand where they are and what they do, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, um, it succeeded pretty well. All the holes are now 53 millimeters minus nothing plus 0.05 millimeters. 
So, uh, well, none of them is like that. Uh, the largest hole is uh, zero four, is uh, four hundredths of a millimeter too. Well, not too, it's oversized. Not too oversized. <laughs> uh, well, it, <clears throat> it's okay. <laughs> so now, uh, in the next episode of Finno Creek Machining, it will be the air oil separator. Uh, this uh, came in between, so these are something like, uh, these are some uh, tasks uh, that you have to do right away, otherwise it's not a good thing. So, till next time, bye!